Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us. Thank you for assembling us here this wonderful, wonderful morning to honor you, Lord, and to learn of you and to love you. Lord, we ask that you open the eyes and ears and hearts of our understanding that we may receive more of you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The thing I will mention to you first is on Thanksgiving Day, we're going to have a uh, kind of an open house here. Come down for free meal. We're going to have a free meal. I, I, let's see. Probably at 1 o'clock. I just made that up. Probably at 1 o'clock we're going to have a free meal, okay? And uh, uh, we have a band coming, live band. They'll be outside, live band, and uh, we'll have a nice time. It's a Thanksgiving celebration open to the entire county. So whoever wants to come, doesn't matter who it is, if they want to come, well, that'd be fine. So if you might want to come just to eat, that'd be good. If you want to come and self-serve, that'd be good too. It's entirely up to you. But it's an open house, okay? On on uh, uh, Thanksgiving Day, starting at, uh, well, actually, somewhere in the area of 12 to 1 o'clock, something like that. I'm not sure. God bless you. We got, uh, we have big time problems here. I mean, not on a personal level, but on a group level, and a, well, I mean, a, a personal level between uh, each of you and my, we all got big time problems. We like that. And the problems seem to increase the higher up we go in our elevation in terms of uh, uh, status, of uh, political status and so forth and so on. It's just terrible. It's getting worse and worse and worse every single day. And I used to say that we were getting bad news well, it used to be once every couple of months. Now it's once every, then it became once every week, then it became once every day, and now it's becoming multiple times in a day. We're getting, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it just, what is it building up to? It's building up to a crescendo. Something's going to happen. When it reaches a peak, what happens when it reaches a peak? When it gets as bad as it's going to get. Well, I'll tell you, what's going to happen when it gets as bad as it's going to get Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. That's the deal. Okay, when the whole is leavened, the Bible says in uh, Matthew 13 about the, the woman who put uh, uh, leaven in, in uh, three three measures of meal. That's the word of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Meals crushed up seed. This Bible is seed. Meals crushed up seed. She put this leavening in it. It says, until the whole was leavened. Until the whole, now that's the church now we're talking about. That's about Christians, you and I. Until the whole was leavened, and then the Lord will return. Well, it seems to me that uh, it's coming due real, real fast. All right, so we need to be paying attention to what's happening to us. We're going to talk about your future today. Your future is here. The millennium, the title of today's message is The Millennium Begins With, because what's going to happen when Jesus Christ returns? Let me just do it like this for you. Jesus returns. And then several things are going to happen at the same time when it returns. It's not just one thing going to happen. Lots of things are going to happen. The first thing is going to happen that the saints will be raptured. And what that means is, because rapture in the dictionary means delight, exceeding joy, delight, will be made one with Jesus Christ. We'll be one. He's coming down, we're going up, meet him in the air. We're going to be made one with Jesus Christ. We get the full mind of Christ, and that means when you get the full mind of Christ, is you get brand new bodies. Of course you die, but your, your, your physical body dies, but the Bible says, how long does it take to get your brand new body on? It says, immediately. No pain, no this, oh, oh, it's immediate, immediately. You should be transformed, okay? Changed in a twinkling of an eye. 
just like that. Go from being this body, bang, to my new body. No pain in between, okay? Jesus. All right. So it's nothing to worry about. That's something to look forward to. Because the body that you're living in <laughs> is about to go down the tubes. I mean, it's just an old age alone, if not an accidental and this, that, and so on and so on. Uh, we're all going down the tubes, right? Okay. So uh, that's we're looking for the essential uh, rapture. We're looking also at the same time when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, because it'll be when it gets so bad on the world, it's been terrible for everybody. Okay, we'll be suffering too, incidentally. Okay, we'll be the end of the great. End of the Great Tribulation. Now, I'm not sure because I've given starting points in the Tribulation for lots and lots of different ways, and I'm not sure what's going on with the Tribulation period, but the Tribulation has been for thousands of years now. Even the, uh, the Gospel writer John said that, that he's in Tribulation with us, okay? Tribulations began, and then the Great Tribulations were in the so, so unbearable very fast. It's sort of like nuclear warfare, okay? All right? So then it's going to be, so Jesus is going to return, he's going to set things right, and that means he's going to end the Great Tribulation. There's going to be no more nastiness anymore, okay? And the other thing that's going to happen when Jesus Christ returns is the beginning of the millennium. So what's going to happen to these things to get raptured and get all with new bodies and, and uh, uh, the mind of Christ. We're going to start, the, rat, uh, start the, the millennium where we reign as kings and priests for a thousand years. We reign as kings and priests for a thousand years, the Bible says. Okay. Now why would we reign as kings and priests? Well, we reign as priests through God with the priestly activities, but there's still there secular people out there for the next thousand years during the millennium who are not saved. Lots and lots and lots of them. And so we reign as kings as well. Kings over the secular uh, side of it and priests over the uh, spiritual side of it. Kings and priests for a thousand years with the mind of Christ and different bodies. There'll still be regular people around, but we'll be with them then, okay? All right, so those are the things that we're, we're, we're kind of waiting for to happen. And uh, when any one of these things happens, the rest of them will happen too. And not any of them will happen until Jesus returns. Simple as that. And he's going to return when the, the whole is leavened, when everything is false doctrine. And we're coming to that now. Our churches are getting false doctrine. you got churches out there. Uh, let's take Christianity, for example. Probably less than one-tenth of one percent of Christianity is actually saved and born again. Evangelical. The rest of them are all Christians. Okay, we call, uh, uh, and we have lots of different denominations. Uh, in a Christian uh, fold, let's say. Look out for yourselves now. Because you're about to die. Now I'm telling you, you're about to die. And some of you may die tonight or tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, or two days or two months from now, or even two years from now. I don't think we're going to be around two years from now. But you're about to die. And the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. That's it. Now, fortunately for us, it's, if, if we're still alive and remain, it's, it's, it, we get changed in a twinkling of an eye, like that. But we need to prepare ourselves to meet the Lord. When you got saved and born again, you got, in, in, you got engaged to, to Jesus Christ. You got married in the sense of the word, but you got engaged in a, in a very Hebrew sense of the word. And what they would do is... When they had a man and a woman got engaged for marriage, it was an agreement, an actual contract, where they met and got engaged. Okay, that was the marriage. They actually got married. The marriage, however, was not consummated until probably. This is not happening every time, but regularly about every about a year afterwards. What happened in the meantime is you went and met, you met your bride, your bride, and you got engaged at marriage contract. Okay, then. The bridegroom 
went back to his place or someplace and started to build a home for the bride. And the bride went back to her home and prepared herself. Prepared herself to meet the Lord. Preparing yourself to meet the Lord. <clears throat> How do you prepare yourself to meet the Lord? Got it. You talk to him. You talk to him. You open this Bible and you read these Bible, these words are coming in, and you talk to him and he talks back to you. You're preparing yourself. You're, as you're reading the Bible, you're actually purifying yourself. Every moment you spend in the Bible, you're purifying yourself because the words of God are coming into your, into your brain and down into your heart. And they're purifying you. Every moment that you spend in the Bible is a moment of purification for you. Okay? You don't even think about that. Because right? it draws you closer and closer to Him. And the closer and closer you are to Him, the more pure you are. Praise God. So now we're going to read here. And I'll do a lot of reading today. Revelation chapter 20 about this millennium that we're about to enter into. And I'll read the boldface, which is the actual text. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed for a little season. Now that's an overview of the millennium which lasts a thousand years, okay? We'll start again. And I saw an angel and this angel I don't want to get too involved in it. It's probably Jesus Christ. I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit. In the Greek, this means a key is as shutting the lock, an actual key of the bottomless pit. We know that Jesus Christ was given a key to the bottomless pit, right? So he must be the angel that's coming down from heaven. And a great chain in his hand. And what he's going to do is he's about to bind Satan with a great chain. Angels can't bind Satan. That's Jesus Christ again to bind Satan, okay? So we're talking about Jesus now, his, his return. This is the coming down is the return. Uh, this is the return of Jesus Christ. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Who could do that except Jesus, right? Thank God. And bound him a thousand years. So that's the first step of Jesus returns. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And cast him into the bottomless pit. So there's a bottomless a bottomless pit. Now let me describe a bottomless pit to you. It's like at night, looking out into space, beyond the stars, into all that space. There's no end to it as far as we can tell. There's no end to that. Isn't that interesting? There's no end to the, 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 the uh, how would I say, the universe as far as we can see. Okay? The other thing is this. The book of Revelation says the angel comes down from heaven with the everlasting gift. With the everlasting, um, excuse me, with the everlasting uh, uh, Word of God, the Bible. Everlasting Word of God. So it's an endless universe in that, in that concept, and a bottomless pit. So, so let's look at the bottomless pit. And I'm not saying that's the universe, I'm just saying... That it's there. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Now why did God put that in there? Because Satan's talking all the time. Talking to you and me all the time. Through other people, through the news, through the this, that, everything we take in influences from this world is Satan talking to us all the time. Influencing us from one way or another. And shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more 
He's been lying. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Loosed, freed a little season, because God's going to take his vengeance upon him then, okay? So now let us look down. We, we continue. We just read Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3. Now we're going to read one of the things that happened right here when the Lord returns. It's called the first resurrection. What have I got here? Saints raptured. Gee, what if the raptured saints and Thessalonians equals the first the first resurrection. What does that mean? What happens when the saints are raptured? It says uh, 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 the uh, dead in Christ will will uh, go first, we go first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Caught up, we're going to rise, right? So, what does it say here about the dead? The dead in Christ will rise. Well, that's a resurrection, isn't it? So what the Thessalonians talk about is talking about the first resurrection. Okay? The dead in Christ will rise, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. We'll all be resurrected. Or, if you're, if you're dead, you're being resurrected. If you're not dead, you're going to be raptured. Same thing, different words. Okay? So let's read about it. Revelation 20, verses 4 through 6. This is going to happen, hopefully, to everyone here. This is your future. The first resurrection. And I saw thrones, and they, that was the saints now, that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Now let me just stop right there and drop down to our first footnote. And judgment was given to the saints. Do you know that you're to judge the world? Did you not know that you're to judge the world? You're to judge other saints, you're to judge the world. People walk around and say, oh, we're not supposed to judge, we're not supposed to judge. Yeah, that's a whole thing of a different thing. That's, a, that's about inner, inner church discipline. We are to, it, it relates to that. But we're to judge. How do you think I can run this rest commission without judging? I judge every, every minute of the day. Okay. How can, in fact, let's, that's an easy example. How about you in your own personal life? When you're dealing with other people, how do you deal with other people? You have to judge whether they're telling you the truth or not. The first thing, right? First thing you do is you listen to someone talk, and then you, you try and figure out what they mean. Because no one ever says what they mean, do they? No one ever says what they mean. So you've got to figure that out, see, where they're coming from. Because the words, the same exact words can have different meanings depending upon where they're coming from, either from a nasty point of view or from a positive point of view. And then you've got to judge that, okay? Well, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Dare any of you, dare any of you, have any matter against another, go to, go to the law before the unjust, and not before the saints. In other words, when you've got a problem with each other, you're, saint, you're saved and they're saved, and you go to the law rather than go to them, go to the, go to the saints first, your brothers and sisters, and, and them themselves first. Dare any of you have any matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Now, there are two common words in the Greek for the word world. One is aion, A-I-O-N. And it means directly this world. But Jesus didn't use that. I would say Jesus, this is Paul, didn't use that. Do you not know that all saints, that the saints shall judge the world? In the word is cosmos he used. Cosmos in the Greek is K-O-S-M-O-S. In the English it's C-O-S-M-O-S. Cosmos, and it means orderly arrangement. Orderly arrangement. Okay? Let's drop down to the footnote underneath that, footnote A, and see, we'll see what cosmos means in the dictionary. It means the world or universe, or universe, as an embodiment of order and harmony, as distinguished from chaos. 
And isn't that what God's doing? Bringing us out of chaos, out of the chaos of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, bringing us out of chaos into order. That's what the whole deal is all about. Out of chaos into order, okay? So we see here it says, as distinguished from chaos, the second definition is complete, a complete and harmonious system. That's God. A complete and harmonious system. The third definition is order, harmony. Isn't that what God's looking for? Yes. And it has to do with the universe. And what does he say here? Now, do you not know that, that the saints shall judge the universe? Now, you think, well, it's silly. How can I judge the universe? You can't. Well, when you're given the full mind of Christ, you can, can't you? Everybody here who's saved and born again is going to receive the full mind of Christ. Raise your hands for that. She's going to receive the full mind of Christ. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to receive the full mind of Christ. And then I'm going to be able to judge. It's, it's sort of like, like, uh, 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 like a, a spiritual warfare against the demons. We're never commanded to attack them. We're commanded to resist the, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Or we're commanded to stand. In other words, resist. We're never commanded to attack because we still have sin in our bodies, right? In our heads. In our minds is where, where the sin is, okay? So we're vulnerable, very much so. I mean, it's like that. We can be knocked off. But when we get the full mind of Christ and a supernatural body, then we're going to be commanded to attack. And we will judge the universe. See all those stars out there? When you look up there at night, night sky, stars in the Bible represent us. Okay? How many stars are there in the Bible? <laughs> I mean, how about stars in the world, I should say? I mean, in the universe. It's impossible to count them. Everyone knows it's a bright light. That's you. Okay? A, uh, and actually, uh, a nuclear light. That's you. That's what God's given us. He's, he says, here's where you stand. All those stars are, are, are angels. That's what you're going to be, an angel. All stars are angels, okay? And what are they doing? They're illuminating the darkness around them, aren't they? They're illuminating the darkness around them. When, when I became a pastor, I started to illuminate the darkness around me. That's what I'm doing today. I'm illuminating the darkness around me. That's what you're going to be doing for all eternity. God's going to give you a spot. And you're going to enlighten all the darkness around you. And the light is the light of love. Praise God. It's all about love. Okay. And he says here, Dare any of you having a matter against another go, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world, that's the universe, and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Do you know that? We're going to judge angels. How are we going to judge angels? Well, how can you judge a good angel? You can't judge a good angel, because he's good. This is God's word. But you can judge a bad angel, can't you? A bad angel, a fallen angel. And that's what we'll be doing. It says, we're going to be judging Fallen angels is what he's telling us here. Okay. Well, you're getting enough. Very, that's why you're going to be kings and priests. There's a lot to that. It's just not a big deal. Like, well, I got a new job now. I'm going to be a king and priest for it. Da, da, da. It's a huge thing. Huge responsibility. But you're given the mind of Christ so you can cope with it. And a new body. An indestructible body. Let me just continue that. And I saw the thrones and they sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. I might go back up here. And I, and I saw thrones and they sat, the saints sat upon them. And judgment was given to, unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. That's the fifth seal in the book of Revelations. Uh, 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 Revelation chapter 6. And it goes into 7 as well. 
and uh, they were beheaded for their witness of Jesus. It's interesting that they were beheaded. What's, what's the favorite Arab thing to do? Muslim thing to do? You, you don't want to believe in, G in Allah? No head. Interesting that that should come up that way, that particular way of killing people. And I, and I saw the souls of them who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned, that's lived and reigned as kings and priests, with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, that's the unsaved people now. When the Lord comes back, Well, the unsaved are not going to be resurrected when the Lord comes back. No resurrection for the unsaved until the end of uh, Revelation chapter 20, which is a thousand years. The unsaved get resurrected a thousand years later, at the end of the millennium, at the great right throne judgment. Just we, in the first resurrection, who are saved and born again, get resurrected at that point in time. And lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy, that's saved now, is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they, that's we, shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign that's as kings, with him a thousand years. A thousand years of reigning with Christ on this earth before the end of the Bible. And we don't know what happens then. Let me go to uh, uh, footnote 1b uh, here, Revelation 1.6. And uh, hath made us, God hath made us, kings and priests unto God and his, and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I, I'm showing you the... The, the, the passage here, I talk about it, but I never show it to you, so I'm showing it now. Revelation chapter 5.10 says the same thing. Uh, footnote C. And hast made us unto our God. And hast made us, past tense now, when you got saved in the morning again, bang, you've been made, that's it. Hast made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 4,000 years. Simple as that. Let's get up to the second footnote. Let's see the comparable thing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Now he's talking brethren here means saved, born again people. I would not have you to be ignorant. Does that mean stupid? Ignorant is not the same word as stupid. Ignorant means not to know, to not understand. Okay? Not to know, not to understand. And he would not, and I would not have you to be ignorant either. That's why we're here today, to tell you this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In the Greek, that means dead. So think of all the dead people that you know, have known. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now wait. So we say, look at that, what that sentence is saying. That you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. Well, who has no hope? <clears throat> if you're not saved in the morning again, you have no hope. <clears throat> you have no hope at all. You don't have any idea what's going to happen to you when you die. But we do, because the Lord's told us it's going to be bad news for you. You have no hope. And this, but the Lord wants us to know that, uh, that those who have, uh, are friends and neighbors and relatives and loved ones who have died, that's not that bad of a deal. If they're saving the Lord again, that's not bad. It's just a matter of they're waiting now. They're waiting to be resurrected. But if you've got saved loved ones, or you've got unsaved loved ones who have born, who, who've died, and, and you can't tell the difference. I'm just telling you right now, you can't tell the difference. Only God can read the heart. You might, you might, your uncle might have died. That you were real fond of your uncle, but he was a mean, nasty guy. He used to beat people up and do this thing and that thing and so on and so on. And, and you get to heaven, and there's your uncle sitting there saying, where you been? And you're saying, what are you doing here? <laughs> and there he is. See, because we can't read the heart. I don't know what's going on in some mean and nasty person in their heart. I know that they have problems, yes, but I don't know whether they're saved in the morning again or not. And you can't make that judgment yourself either.
until you become an angel, in fact. But I would, have, what I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, as ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. There you go. So you got loved ones who have died in Jesus. Okay, in other words, they've been saved in the morning again. When the Lord returns, he's going to be bringing them with him. That's what it says, isn't it? That's the great army. A cloud of witnesses. He's going to be bringing with him. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them, and that means precede them in the Greek, shall not precede them which are asleep. In other words, we're not going to get ahead of the one. The first thing is actually going to happen is the dead in, the dead in Christ are going to be resurrected first. And as they're going up, then we also are going to be resurrected and go up with them to meet the, together to meet the Lord in the air. Now here's the first resurrection. Read it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's the first resurrection right there. It's our rapture. Okay? And it's for, for the people who are already dead in Christ, it's their it's the first resurrection for them. Uh, but for us, we are alive and remain. It's called a rapture of 1 Thessalonians. It's, it, that's not a biblical term. That's extra biblical. Let's call it a rapture. But we're going to rise up with them to meet the Lord in the air. We're resurrected. So, saints rapture, which is also the first resurrection. Jesus returns. Saints uh uh, are, are raptured. Now let's go on to Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 10. And when the th this is all about this is all about the millennium now. This whole thing we're doing actually Revelation chapter 20, the whole chapter. And when the thousand years are expired, and when a thousand years are done, and we've been reigning for, as kings and priests in immortal bodies with the mind of Christ for a thousand years. Over millions and millions and millions and millions of people, Satan's been locked up in, in, a, in, a, in the bottomless pit, so it not be able to influence them. And we've been able to save millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people, adding them to God's army, while Satan is being detained in prison. And after the thousand years are expired, oh, I mean, now we come to the end of the thousand years. Now what happens? Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out and deceive the nations. Because that's what he does. He's by nature he's a deceiver. He's going to go out and deceive the nations. Deceive the nations. That's the world which are in the four quarters of the earth. That's very clear. It's the world. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now let's stop here a minute sand of the sea, and go down to the first commentary about the sand of the sea. The sea in the Bible is a biblical symbol of unsaved humanity. The sea in the Bible, it, meant, it, got, it mentions the sea in there. That's always a symbol in the Bible of unsaved humanity, the sea of unsaved humanity. Okay? May we note that the waters of the sea, and that means people are the waters of the sea, are evaporated upward into invisibility. Isn't that what happens to the water? What happens to the water? It's evaporated upward into, into invisibility. What does the Bible say about invisibility? It says our God is an invisible God. What do we become? We become invisible. Right now, what are the spirits and the uh, unclean spirits of demons around us? They're invisible because they're spirits. We're becoming a spirit too. And isn't that interesting that to see the waters are evaporated up 
They enter invisibility. They become invisible. You can see when you start going to visit, less and less and less, and they become invisible. The sea is the biblical symbol of unsaved humanity. May we note that the waters of the sea are evaporated upward into invisibility to serve the invisible God. That's in uh, invisible God is one, Colossians 1.15. I do this for those in an in internet congregation. 1 Timothy 1.17, Hebrews 11.27. To serve the invisible God, where is the sand? Where is the, what happens to the sand? Well, what does the sand represent? If the water being evaporated up, raptured up, taken up to God represents the people, the same people, what's the sand represent? Unsaved. What's left behind? The unsaved people. The unsaved people. Now, with that in mind, let's go back to our text now. Uh, and, and Satan shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breath of the... No, wait a minute, the number of who? Is the sand of the sea. The sand of the sea? Well, that makes right, because these are the enemy. You're going to go out to... Uh, uh, these are Gog and Magog, to gather them and their armies together, and the number of them is as the sand, sand of the sea. Unsaved. Unsaved are coming against the saved. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed, this is the sand of the sea, and they went up upon, up on the breath of the earth, with the earth and compassed, and sort of surrounded the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city. What's the beloved city? The beloved city is Jerusalem. Well, yeah, I tell you, <laughs> any idea how Jerusalem looks on the map with, the, with its enemies around it? It's like almost solidly surrounded. So we're ready. We're ready for this to happen. And we're waiting for the time when the Lord decides to come. Because everything has been prepared. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. This is now at the end of the uh, 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 Revelation 20. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented as tortured pain to vex day and night forever and ever. Now wait a minute. We got a bottomless pit here, which is the... Uh, okay, let's, well, let's do it this way. It's the lake of fire. There's a lake of fire. Now, that brings to mind something that the Lord said is not my word as a fire. Is not my word as a fire. Okay? So now, the, and who's cast into the lake of fire? The devil. The devil is cast into the lake of fire. And who else with them? And the beast and the false prophet are. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Media. That's a prophet here. We've already established the fact that probably the false prophet is the media. Thank you. Over there. <laughs> the beast is the Antichrist. And the devil is Satan. Okay, so, lake of fire. And what are we see in the lake of fire now? It burns forever and ever and ever. Where the worm is not, it means where their body is not consumed. They're just going to be on fire forever and ever and ever and ever. In other words, if this is indeed a lake of God's word, to unsaved people, it's a lake of fire. And it burns and burns and burns and burns without consuming them. Without consuming them at this point in time because their, their spirit not, uh, not uh, 
flesh anymore. Okay, now let's go to the second footnote from uh, down there, Revelation 19, 19, 19, verses 19 and 20. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. What did that just tell you? Alive tells you something. Okay, that means they're people. Okay? You don't you've never seen in any place in the Bible where it says the spirits are alive. Okay? Because they are life themselves. But this is referencing now to people. These both were cast alive into fake into, into, into the fire. What was cast alive? The beast and the false prophet. The Antichrist and uh, the, the Apostle Paul said, or John said, there's many Antichrists with us even now. That's unbelievers. But the beast and the false prophet are all people. Got that? It's going to be interesting now. Third footnote in the back. Matthew 25, 41. Jesus Christ speaks now. Then shall he say unto, uh, also unto them, and he's talking now, Jesus is talking about the end times when he's come down to judge between the sheep and the goats. The sheep are on one hand and the goats are on the other hand. The sheep, you tell them, you ask them to do something, you tell them to do something, and they, they go ahead and do it, and they obey. Goats, when you ask them to do something, they refuse, and then you push them a little bit, and they push back, and you push them a little more, and they push back harder, and so forth and so on. I got goats and sheep on my staff. All the time. I've had it for 20-some years now. And sometimes I get a whole staff of goats. It's, oh, my God, a whole staff of goats. But uh, these are good. I got, I got some sheep on the staff, too. Okay? Most of the people that come, come to work on, on, our, on our rescue mission are, uh, are homeless people. So they've been living in a, in a, in a, in a underneath a tree or, or, or in, in, a, uh, in a car someplace or, or share an apartment with, with somebody else for a while or this, that, or wherever they can to get by, and they come on staff. Some have already received Jesus Christ before they come on staff. Others receive Jesus Christ when they come on staff or shortly after they come on staff. And then they start changing a little bit. Start changing a little bit. And I've seen... See, this is my judgment now. I've seen somebody come in who I think was just, this is an animal almost, okay? And, and it turns out to be change, 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 change. It changed. Now, not perhaps dramatically, but, but changed, transformed. God does that. God changes us, you know. God will change you. If you think you're rebellious and, and you don't believe in, in God, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, well, you're a goat. You just absolutely refuse it. You refuse to hear it. You keep pushing. God's telling you stuff and you keep pushing back. No, 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 I don't want to hear that. You're actually standing like this. I'm guarding my heart. Nobody's getting to me. When the Lord wants you to stand like that, open up your heart as a cross to Jesus. See? Well, Let's see about this now, what Jesus said. This is really important what he said here. And then shall he say unto them, as the goats now, he's going to talk to the goat people. On the left hand, he said that, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now Jesus Christ said that this fire is prepared for the devil and his angels, right? Okay. And we see that the beast is somebody, a live person, the false prophet is somebody, that's somebody, he's plural, they're both plural. What's going to happen to an unsaved guy or girl? What's going to happen to an unsaved person? Let me show you. Unsaved people, 
lake of fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels, that Jesus Christ said. What's that make you if you happen to be in the lake of fire? It makes you a fallen angel. See the reasoning there? If it's prepared for the devil and his, and, and his angels, okay, that's this. How about the unsaved guy? He goes there too. The devil and his angels. And now the point I'm making to you this is this, and this is a stretch. It's a hard thing to grasp. I've been kind of working on it little by little with you folks here. We're angels. I mean, when it comes right down to it, we're angels. That's what we're going to be. I'm not sure I can't go back into where we came from in that regard, but I can see if we're going to judge angels and we're going to judge the universe and we're getting the mind of Christ, Jesus Christ, we're going to be part of the Godhead now. And what the Bible says is that this cross describes us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, God the man. But we're ascending as we get revelation upon revelation upon revelation upon revelation till eventually we'll be at this position where this will be the cross. This, 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 and this. God always on top, Jesus Christ on the right, Holy Spirit on the left, us at the bottom. But what's that make us? How come, we can, how come I can say that? Because we'll have the mind of Christ. Doesn't he have the mind of Christ? Yeah. Doesn't he have the mind of Christ? Yeah. Doesn't he have the mind of Christ? Or she, as the case may be. I'm not sure about the Holy Angel or Holy Spirit now. Thank you, yes? Us too. Mind of Christ. You're going to become part of the Godhead. That's why you're going to be able to, to preach and teach. And that's how you're going to be kings and priests. And that's how God, Jesus Christ is going into all the universe and preach the gospel to every creature. He said world, but his world was cosmos, as universe. He said, go into the universe and preach, preach to every creature. How can God trust us on such a thing as that? Well, because it won't be Lionel going. It'll be, how will I say? Well, maybe we, I might retain the name. We don't know. But I'll have the full mind of Christ and an immortal body. I won't have any sin. So God can trust me then to unequivocally preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in all truth and, and, and fairness and straight. That's what's happening to all of us. We're being preferred. Pre uh, uh, how is it? We're being made right. We're being made righteous. We're being... And we're not doing it. The Bible says God's the God who's doing it. God in us is doing it. We're not doing it to ourselves. We can't make our own selves more holy and righteous, but God can. He's making you, each of you, more holy and right. You are... Angels. Now, I'll go to a, another quick thing. This is this is all heavy duty doctrine. Now, if you can see how my reasoning goes, that if the lake of fire was prepared for the devil and his angels, according to Jesus, and that's a human people, that this is a human burst, a human being here that's in it, and these are human people here, and this is human people here that are in it, and that's where all the unsaved people go too. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. That's where all the unsaved people go too. What does that make us? The devil and his angels. Here's the devil. And all the rest are his angels. That's why you were born in sin. And I think, I'm in the point of speculation now, just something to think about. I think we're part of the fallen angels that fell. Human beings are. That's fell. And God is correcting that. God is correcting that in us. Because according to Scripture, if I say people are, are, are angels, what kind of angels are they? Are they good angels or bad angels? There's only two kinds of angels. There are no medium in between angels walking the line. You're either an angel, a good angel or a bad angel. Oh, if, 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 if there's, uh, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of angels are people? Bad angels. Now that's a really difficult concept to get. 
but you need to kind of think about that. That's a really heavy duty deal, okay? And some people would say, not most people, when you talk to somebody and the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, well, that's apostasy, then you can say back, no, you can't say that. But you need to think, that's an idiot that I'm talking to now. I need to walk away from it. <laughs> you, can't, you shouldn't call him an idiot. I do it, and that's, God forgive me for that. You have to reason this thing out. You can't just take, a, take something that you don't like hearing and, don't, and you don't understand and say, bang, I don't understand it. That's it, it's apostasy. Things don't work like that. That's an easy way of copying out on something. All right, now, so anyway, I wanted to point that out to you. Thoughts for you? Let's go to Revelation 20, uh, verse 20, verses 11 through 15. And this is the, the, the last of the, the Revelation 20. This is the end now the, of the thousand year millennium, also. And I saw a great white throne. Now this is Lucas is the uh, is the Greek and Lucas it means excuse me it means light, and that's what God is. He's light. He's he's life. Okay. And I saw a great white throne and and, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. So the old heaven, this earth we're on, and the heaven are going to be destroyed completely. No place for them. Completely destroyed. And I saw the dead, small and great small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Oh, well, look at this. There's books. And the books were opened. And another book was opened. Well, wait a minute. And then there's another book. So we've got the books, and we've got the book, which is the book of life. Ooh, this is the book of life. Now, which would you rather be judged out of, by your works or by grace, the book of life? Book of life. Now let's see what happens here. And the books were open. Now it's, it's, everybody, all the dead are, are, are resurrected now, okay? We're going to see this coming, okay? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Well, that's all those dead who have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior when judges those things are written in the books, which are their works. According to their works. According to their works. Now, I want to tell you something right now. All your works are as I'm just highly paraphrasing this, but it's rotten maggots, unrighteousness, okay, by according to the Bible. Your works don't amount to nothing to God. All unrighteousness. That's your works. But God's works through you are righteous. Are righteous. And God, believe it or not, uses the unsaved just like he uses the saved. You've got all kinds of guys up there on television and all kinds of guys in all these uh, churches all around here preaching false gospels. All kinds of them, okay? And then you've got some of these guys, uh, uh, other guys who aren't saved, aren't even born again, who are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and getting people saved. How come? Because it's not them that's doing the saving. It's the word that they're, they're, they're speaking is doing the saving. But God's using unsaved people to get people saved. Isn't that neat? In fact, probably these more, <laughs> I'm almost going to say, I can't do that. I can't say, I can't judge that. Using unsaved people to get people saved. 
The only works that you're ever going to do that are going to amount to anything are works that God has set you to that you've accomplished through Him. That's it. Now, if you decide to go do this, that, or so on, that, that, on your own, this, this, or that, this, this, don't mean squat. Just, you're, you're just kidding yourself. Because you're doing it out of yourself and not out of God. Just kidding yourself. The greatest thing we can be is a vessel for the Lord. Greatest, a vessel means a container for the Lord. That's what we are. We're vessels. What do I contain? I contain the Word of God. Inside of me, I'm a vessel for the Lord. The Lord uses me. I'm an instrument for the Lord. I'm like, the word is God is the creator of the entire universe. He's going to talk to me as an equal, like the line of the, you know, you think you're going to get taken? That's going to happen. He's going to use me as an instrument. He's going to use me as an instrument to serve him. And I'm going to do it lovingly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anyway, we have these unsaved people now at the end of the millennium and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. This is using sea in a different terminology now. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. I'll stop a moment. Listen, this is going to confuse you. A word in the Bible symbolizes something in the Bible. Not always. It's not always the same. If you look and see, sometimes that same word means something else or symbolizes something else. See, the only, only, only the Spirit of God can discern the difference. That's where the unsaved guy runs into trouble because the Bible doesn't make any sense to him because these words are all used and he's taking them all to mean the same thing and they're not. This word is used differently. That's like, for example, the sea now is referred to it differently than it has. We just spoke about it being the sea of the people, okay? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell were delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. Anybody here who's saved them born again? You're going to see the second death. You're not going to participate in it. You're going to see the second, second death, but you're not going to participate in it. Only those people who are unsaved are going to participate in a second death. That's the bad one. Where you're judged by your works rather than by grace. Now, reading Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. And now look at this, what happens then. And I see a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And there was no more sea. What does it mean that there was no more sea? What do we say that the sea represented? A symbol of humanity, right? Well, here it says there's no more sea. What this means is this. This is a new heaven and a new earth. And there's not... Anybody on it who's not saved and born again. Everybody is saved and born again. That's what that's talking about there. You can see that for the reference. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. It's all saved people living on this world that God's recreating. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And you're going to live with God. 
Right now, we're living with God, but we're separated from God. Well, we're separated because of our sin. If we were, if 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 we were living, if we were talking to God, gone like that in a flash, burned up, sin. You can't abide any sin. But then we'll be perfected, we'll be made righteous, and we'll be living with God. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All the tears from your eyes. And some of you have been crying last night and maybe even today. Some of you have been crying. Some of you have had tears. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Well, praise God, no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Praise God. Revelation 21, verses 5 through 8. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Alpha is the beginning uh, uh, of the Greek alphabet, and uh, Omega is the ending of the Greek alphabet. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcomes what? He that overcomes himself or herself. Because all these things out here are distracting you because your big problem is you. You're the problem. And you need to overcome these things that are in your life in terms of the way God wants you to be. That's the overcomer. When you overcome these problems that you have in a godly fashion, you become an overcomer. But it's your problems that you're talking about. Not mine. Yours. He that overcometh, what? Shall inherit all things. All things. Everything is ours. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But here you go. See if you're here on this list. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, that would be homosexual lesbian thing, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Praise God. Praise God. So he's coming, and he's coming soon. The saints will be, Jesus returns, the saints will be raptured at the same time, which at the same time will be happy, the first resurrection is the same thing. It's going to end the Great Tribulation and it's going to begin the Millennium all at the same time at the same event. Now what God is looking for is an army. God's been building an army for thousands of years now out of men and women. An army, an army of God. Okay. What is an army to God? An army to God is obedient servants. Obedient servants. Just like in the military. You can take orders and obey. And, not, and, and you can be submissive and not be aggressive. <clears throat> That's God's army. That's God's army. And what he's doing is he's training up you people. You people right here to be kings and priests, to be preachers for the next thousand years to come. It's about to start. As soon as the Lord returns, that's the beginning. Of it. We'll be transformed, twinkling of an eye, just like that. Bang! Kings and priests. What more meaningfully 
creatures to all the billions and billions and billions of people that will be born and live for the next thousand years on this earth. And that will be billions of people. Out of them, a lot of them are going to get saved and enlist in the army of God. And a lot of them aren't going to get saved. And in the end, some will go up, and some will go down. What does God ask? He asks for you to open your heart. He asks for you to trust Him. Trust means this. You're standing like this. No, no, no. Rattle, rattle. No, no, no. Protect your heart. He wants you to open your heart and to trust Him and allow Jesus Christ to come into your life and change you and transform you. Now, all the things we're talking about today, you don't have to understand all those things. You don't have to know all those things. You just got to... Oh, I say, know what the Lord wants you to know, and He'll teach you as you go. As you go. But some of us are going to be in the army of God, and some are going to be in a lake of fire with the devil and the rest of the unsaved people, uh, the beast and the false prophet, and so forth and so on. What do you want? What do you want with your life? You know, your life is just like that. That's all it is. In, in, in terms of time, which is an artificial construct made by God just, just to help us, that's life. That's all it all is. You're, you're, some people die when they're 10 years old. Some people get born and die when they're 20, 50, 60, 100, 200. Not 200 yet. But so. That's what your life is, just like that. And you have an ch- opportunity now to change your life. Because if you've not received Jesus Christ, you've not asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you're going down, baby. You're going down. And you'll find out that I'm right on your way down. And if you'd like to change that, what the Lord says is this. He says this in John 3, 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again. The only way to heaven is except to be born again. He didn't say except a man be a Protestant or a Baptist or Catholic or a Buddhist or a Muslim or the uh, whatever. He said he was born. He didn't say a man has except a man be black, white, pink, purple, or polka dotted. He didn't say that. He didn't say except a man be baptized. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said you got to be born again. Born again. So how do you get born again? Uh, Romans 10.9, the Apostle Paul explains it very nicely. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, I mean say a little prayer out loud, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And, what's it say? It's a little and here, conjunction. And is in that sentence. And believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. If you believe, if you're willing to believe that Jesus Christ died on this cross and paid the penalty for all your sins and was resurrected, for you to get saved, all it remains for you to do is to say the prayer. Except a man be born again. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus is the beginning of that prayer. If thou shalt confess, and why would the word, by, because how, why God used the word confess is that that implies, you know that you sin. You, you sin come against God, you sin against God. Penalty for sin against God is death. Separation from God eternally. Now, I don't know about the good stuff, but I can see that this isn't really anything I really want to personally experience, okay? I get in a little bit of thought, and it's just not a cool place to be, okay? So, uh, and especially, especially because it's for the entire rest of my, my, my existence, which might, which might be, which is actually uh, forever. Forever is not a good place for there to be here. I want to be up there. So if there's anybody here today who would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please raise your hand 
and we'll say a little, I will say a little prayer with you, and you can receive Jesus. Is there anybody like today who would like to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior here today? Anybody here like to pray that prayer? Anybody here like to join us and go to heaven? I'm just, yes, sir, yes, sir. I can see you, sir. Anybody else like to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I did that. He, he, he's uh, uh, he's all bad out of shape. Obviously, he's crippled up. And uh, But he raises his hand every time. And that's okay. You're going to heaven. You're going to get a brand new body. That's for sure, man. All right. That's Brett. Say hello to Brett. Say hello, Brett. Say, wave, Brett. You're on television now. Or you're on, whatever it is. All right. Now, don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Okay. We don't want you to, don't dance. None of that stuff now. No, sit down. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Okay. Anybody like to receive Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. Anybody over here like to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Would you come forward, please? Yes, sir. What's your name? Kevin? Kevin? Devin. 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 D-E-V-N. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for your sins and was resurrected? Good. God bless you, kid. Devin, come on up here for a minute with me. Look at this guy. This guy's going to get saved. This guy's going to be starting a new new creature. He's going to become a new man. Stand over here and face the audience, please. Anybody else? I guess. Name? Okay, Joe. This is rededication. Yeah, rededication. Yeah. Saved. Devin, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for your sins and was resurrected? Yep. Good. Thank you. Uh, we're going to say this prayer then out loud. Uh, if you're saved in the morning again, uh, here's an opportunity to pray to God. I'm praying to God. Listen, every time you pray to God, there's benefits coming your way. Absolutely every time you pray to God, there's benefits coming your way. I mean, you may not see it, but God's love. So when he clicks on you, all he's doing is he's loving you back. That's a benefit. You can say this prayer with me. Please raise and we'll all say it together like a chorus of heavenly angels. Okay. Gentlemen, let's say this now, shall we? Father God. Father God. I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ yes, died on the cross and paid the penalty for all my sins and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Father God, please send your son, your seed, your fire, your, fire. Your, love. your love, into my heart, into my heart. To, be the Lord to be the Lord and Savior, and Savior. Of, my life. of my life. Thank you, Father God. You, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No, God bless you, Devin. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> uh, before everybody runs off, well, where are y'all going? Hey! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Please be seated. Bobby, take this. We're going to do the tithes and offerings now. Maybe that's why they're running. I don't know. Shouldn't be. Go ahead. Give everybody an opportunity. But don't mess around. We're taking tithes and offerings. We do this every time as an additional blessing for you. It is additional blessing for you. You've gotten the Word of God. I read you all this stuff here. Um, even though I might have been way off base on the things that I said, you've got the Word from God. <laughs> and that's a blessing in itself, okay? Uh, we're taking tithes and offerings. God said, return to me. That means he asks you to give him 10% of your increase for the week or the month or the year, or whatever, which way you're, you're working, regardless of his size. And he's looking for obedient servants. And he's testing you on your money. Because the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So he wants to see if you're still rooted in evil, or that he can unroot you from the evil, and you can believe in him. And the tithe is a 
measure of your obedience to him. And regardless of how many good works and things that you're doing, if you don't tithe, there's something wrong someplace. There's error. Error. Thank you, sir. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us. Thank you for this message today, Lord. Thank you for the tithes and offerings. Lord, I ask that you bless every person here with more of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We have a, a uh, wait a minute, before we, we can, you know, soon, soon, one more thing. <laughs> Russell, how about standing blessing the food we're about to partake of? Amen. God bless God. Hope to see you next week. Let's eat. Shout time.